I'm just going to try this out and see how it goes. Um, I am. Uh, my name's Ken Tracy, a uh, former realtor of 17 years, a guy with a finance degree, a guy who's currently waiting tables in Yellowstone National Park uh, for the season, and a guy who is enjoying his day off uh, from waiting tables and slinging hash and having a quiet morning, spending it here in the map room. Give you a quick tour of the map room. <laughs> Super quiet morning. A couple guys cleaning. Uh, friends of mine. A young lady serving coffee. And I want to say a special shout out. Thanks to Raven for this cup of coffee, which is delicious. I uh, was flipping through my phone, editing some videos, getting excited about my day. I got a big, uh, not a big day. I got a fun day ahead of me where I'm going to ride my scooter. Uh, into the uh, Yellowstone National Park and uh, uh, visit a couple places. And one of the locations is the Grand Canyon uh, Yellowstone. And I'm really looking forward to that. It's probably going to be about an hour ride into some beautiful territory and probably see uh, some cool things along the way and maybe take some pictures and uh, be a bit of a tourist. But anyway, as I was flipping through my phone, uh, I went to CNBC, a former stockbroker and a guy that's always kind of interested in money. Uh, and as a former realtor, uh, one of the articles uh, that came up jumped out at me. And it was that home prices hit a record high again this month as sales fall again. And I just thought it was interesting. And I've been seeing it over the last several years uh, during near the end of the uh, 2021 or what have you. Uh, sales started exploding uh, uh, and prices started going up really quickly. And I was a realtor at the time, nearing the end of my career, and I had homes that were sitting on the market getting few showings. And then one month, all of a sudden, the showing activity picked up, and my sellers were almost getting tired about the number of uh, showing requests and appointment requests. And I had a couple of homes that had been sitting on the market that got, got gobbled up. And I think that trend continued, and I don't totally know what happened. Uh, but anyway, uh, inventory dropped, and sales volume dropped, and prices started going up, and have gone up dramatically and continued to go up dramatically. And a little bit, that's why I'm here today, because housing prices across the country are, uh, have gotten so expensive. And I'm not totally sure what's causing it other than total lack of supply. People almost can't afford to sell their homes today because, you know, you can sell the home, but then you got to buy another place to live in. And uh, that is becoming harder and harder to do with lower inventory and higher mortgage rates. So when I saw this article titled, uh, Home Prices Hit a Record High Across the Country, and the average home price uh, was $419,000 in uh, uh, the last month that was reported, yet sales volume dropped again. And the uh, head economist over at the National Association of Realtors, a guy called Lawrence Yoon, said he expected a rebound in volume, but it didn't happen this spring, and he was surprised. And we're continuing to see that month after month. And I've been saying something has got to give at some point. You can't have prices continuing to go up and volume continuing to drop. And I'm a free market guy, and I think eventually things work out uh, as they're meant to. Uh, but something's got to give. And with mortgage rates hovering in the mid-sevens right now, uh, my fear, my thought, and, you know, take it for what it's worth, it's a guy that's waiting tables in Yellowstone, but he's also a guy with a finance degree who was a realtor for 17 years, uh, who knows a thing or two. Uh, I think what's going to give and what's going to, I think something's got to give and eventually volume has to pick up and I think prices are going to have to uh, perhaps come back down uh, because as a guy that I think works pretty hard. I'm finding it harder and harder to afford housing, and I know people are feeling that way. And if you don't own a home right now, and you're a young kid, I, I know, you know, you're thinking about living in your car or coming to national parks because they provide housing. 
and eventually that's going to have to uh, change. And I think what's going to cause a change is either prices uh, dropping back down or mortgage rates going up higher. And I talk to a lot of people that say, oh, I was around when the mortgage rates were 15% in 1980. Well, I'll tell you what, I was around back then too. Uh, I might have only been a kid, but I was still watching uh, interest rates. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see mortgage rates uh, spike up. And I think everyone's just assuming they're going to fall nicely back down to the you know, four, five, six percent that we've been spoiled with over the last several years. I think what would shock this market more than anything is seeing interest rates spike higher and mortgage rates jump to 15 percent. And the cost of buying a home would be so uh, such a barrier to doing it. Uh, I think demand would fall. And I think all these companies that are these big corporations that have been buying uh, up all these single family homes and uh, multiple family uh, condos and apartments and renting them out are going to left, be left holding the bag and are going to get burnt. And this endless supply or excuse me, endless demand for home prices is I think going to dry up one day and it's going to dry up quickly and you're going to see a correction in home prices and eventually you're going to see a return of volume. Uh, sales volume in the real estate market. It's funny, I talked to a lot of people about real estate and I said I left a year and a half ago and I don't understand, but a lot of people out there that aren't in the business don't get it. And they think just because homes are selling quickly that realtors are making a killing. But you can't make a killing when volume is drying up. And we're seeing volume dry up month after month and get less and less. And the, I think, 4.1 million homes uh, uh, is the annual rate right now. And that's the lowest rate we've seen in 30 years in real estate. And I'll tell you, without volume, realtors don't make any money. It, it's great when homes sell quickly, but it, it, it only matters if there's a lot of homes selling because realtors get paid on volume. Uh, more than anything and the market's drying up and eventually that's going to have to change and I think what's going to cause it to change and I don't know why it's going to happen or how it's going to happen is my bet is the mortgage rate's going to spike higher and we're going to see interest rates go to 15 percent and uh, uh, things are going to change because they have to. I know too many people that are living in vans, living in cars, working in national parks owning houses, wanting to downsize, but they can't afford to downsize because they'd have to uh, sell their home that's locked in at a 3% uh, financing and buy a smaller home at 7 or 7.5 or 8%. And uh, the math just doesn't work out. And eventually math works out, and we're going to see an adjustment is my prediction. You know, take it for what it's worth. It's just a guy who hasn't shaved in a week wearing a hat, hanging out in Yellowstone, uh, waiting tables, excited to have two days off, and uh, hanging out in a beautiful part of the country, drinking some coffee. But I thought that story was interesting and just kind of wanted to share my thoughts. You can't have prices go up and volume drop forever. And we've seen it for a year and a half straight. And there's going to be a correction. And again, as a guy with over 30 years, or about 30 years in the markets, financial and real estate, I've uh, seen a lot of crazy stuff. And uh, one thing I do know is the pendulum always swings one way and then it swings back. And uh, back in 2007, 2008, when I was new in the business, uh, mortgage companies were doing adjustable rate mortgages and no doc loans and 110% loans where they'd literally give you more than the cost of the home. <laughs> uh, uh, to loan you more than the cost of that you're paying for the home. And all those things seem crazy for a bunch of years, uh, but we're starting to see it again. And we're seeing uh, uh, companies doing what they have to to get loans or to, to, to loan you money. And eventually this bubble, this endless bubble of prices going up and volume dropping is going to change. And when it does, it's going to be exciting time in the market. And uh, I'm just having fun watching. 
uh, from the safety of Yellowstone, from the safety of a uh, real low cost to live in where I'm at, uh, because I'm, you know, renting a place for 500 bucks a month, renting in a dorm, getting food and shelter provided, uh, blessed to have a job that's paying me a lot, uh, enabling me to cover my uh, financial responsibilities and save up a little money while I'm doing it. Uh, allowing, will I get back into real estate? No way. No way. I'm never getting back into real estate. I'm never getting back into real estate. I didn't like being a realtor. Uh, nothing against it. The best part about it was running your own business, but I just not didn't like it. I didn't want every human being I came across to be a potential client. Uh, I'd rather make people smile, whether it's in a dining room or via my show Coffee with Ken. And uh, I think I'm making more of a difference doing my show Uh, live every morning that is Coffee with Ken and just talking about life and sobriety and mental health and financial highs and lows and relationship stuff uh, than I ever did as a realtor or as a uh, stockbroker. But anyway, just wanted to hop on real briefly and share a few thoughts. Uh, Do with those thoughts what you will. Uh, But I'm a guy that's having fun, uh, sharing his story, sharing a cup of coffee. And is really enjoying his day off where he got to sleep in. And he's going to ride his scooter into Yellowstone and go see some really cool things. And uh, uh, just hopefully enjoy his day. And I hope you enjoy your day as well. Hope you had a wonderful night's sleep. Hope you are feeling good. Hope you are loving yourself. Hope you are forgiving yourself. And as always, I hope to talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.